What's going on guys and welcome to the next Crack a Pack episode today for a very special pack We have fifth dawn a lot of awesome stuff in this set uh, hoping to open something of some value uh, Obviously there are a lot of not so great cards in here as well But uh, this was a very very fun set part of the Mirrodin block uh, one of notoriously the most interesting blocks of all time uh, We will of course look at this from a draft perspective So we're gonna do our best to figure out what our pack one pick one would be I'm gonna go ahead and say I did not draft during this time, so I don't actually know what the like good decks, good cards, anything like that. So this is kind of a first look for me, so we'll do the best we can. Uh, and our first common here is Lose Hope, which is one black for an instant. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, and then you scry two. This actually seems like an okay card. Uh, it's not gonna be amazing, obviously. It's not gonna deal with a lot of creatures, but uh, it does kind of deal with the early game and it filters your draw. Uh, so I'm not opposed to this card. I'm sure this isn't the best first pick in the world, but uh, I do think it's pretty good. Uh, Sun-Touched Mirror uh, is a 0-0 zero, zero for 3, and then it has Sunburst, so it comes into play with a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each color of mana used to pay its cost. Uh, so you can kind of get this up to a 3-3 three, three for 3. I think, honestly, because that's kind of the max, this isn't really the best card in the world. Uh, there are, um, I don't know about in this set, I know in Mirrodin Modular was a thing. Uh, and so if Modular basically let you move these counters around as creatures died, things like that. And so Sunburst in tandem with that was fantastic. Uh, but on its own, I don't think it was all that good. So I'm not super excited about that. Uh, Kark Clan Ogre is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and 2 red, uh, and you can pay a red, sacrifice an artifact, and target creature can't block this turn. Uh, this is a pre pretty aggressive card. Uh, I don't like it because it's it's high investment. Uh, it's already 5 mana for a 3-3, three, three, which isn't great, uh, but on top of that you have to pay another red and sacrifice an artifact just to make something uh, basically either unblockable or make some profitable attacks on your end. and. I'm not a huge fan of that. It just seems a little bit too uh, investing for something like that. Uh, definitely probably a powerful card, but something that really requires a lot of setup, a lot of investment, so not a huge fan. Uh, Ferocious Charge, two and a green for an instant. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn and scry two. Uh, this seems like a perfectly fine combat trick. Uh, it's a little expensive at three for a combat trick. I usually try and keep them at one and two personally, uh, but this is really powerful. F plus four, plus four is nothing to shake a stick at. Plus, you do get to filter your draws again with that scry two. I like Lose Hope a little bit better than this card, but I do think both of them are quite good. Uh, Skyreach Manta is a 0-0 zero, zero for 5, again featuring that sunburst mechanic, and it does have flying. Uh, I think this definitely beats out the Lose Hope. Uh, this is just an evasive threat, is what it amounts to. Uh, obviously, you, you're not necessarily banking on getting a 5-5 five, five flyer for 5, but uh, if you get 3 or 4 mana of different colors into this, this is definitely worth it. Uh, as it is a flyer, it's going to be evasive, it's going to deal some damage, so I do like that. Uh, Skyhunter Prowler is a 1-3 for 2 and a white with flying, and attacking doesn't cause it to tap. This is actually pretty good. It's not amazing by any means. I think I'd prefer the Manta still, but uh, the fact that this doesn't have to tap to actually attack is pretty useful because it does have that 3 toughness, which makes it a little bit better at blocking a lot of some of the lower power flyers, things like that. Again, pretty good. Not the card I want here. Uh, Razorgrass Screen is a 1 mana artifact for a 2-1 wall, uh, which means it definitely can attack, and it blocks each turn if able, which is a really interesting uh, way of phrasing that. I don't know uh, I don't know that I like that. I don't like walls in general, uh, for uh, limited anyway, because they're just not very proactive. Uh, they don't do that much. Yes, they slow down the, the ground game pretty well, uh, and that's fine in certain decks, but Generally, you want a sort of proactive deck in a limited format, and so this really doesn't do it for me. Uh, Stand Firm uh, is another Scry 2 card, so an instant for one white, and target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, and then Scry 2. Uh, this is like, okay, it's not great, uh, it's not a huge buff, the Scry 2 is really what you want out of this, especially for only one white, that's a lot of stuff for just that. Uh, but. In general, this is not that exciting. I'm sure it's a decently fine combat trick, but not better than the Manta, in my opinion. Uh, Vicious Betrayal is 3 and 2 black. For a sorcery, as an additional cost to play it, you sacrifice any number of creatures, and the target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn for each creature sacrificed this way. Uh, this is an interesting card, actually, because this could be used as sort of... Well, I say that. I, I'm wrong, actually. Because it's a sorcery, it's not an instant. 
this can't be used as sort of a surprise win con. Uh, if this was instant speed, I think this would be fantastic uh, because you could sort of swing in with all that you wanted to swing in with and then whichever creature they didn't block just sacrifice the rest and theoretically you're able to just kind of kill them uh, as long as you have enough creatures but without this being instant speed I don't think this is very good uh, I might be wrong on that but I think because it's not instant speed it's just kind of not worth it uh, mirror quadrupod is a 1-4 for 4 mana and you can pay 3 to switch its power and toughness until end of turn I don't like this card uh, I just think this is kind of bad uh, it's a lot of investment for not a very good creature is what it really amounts to a 1-4 for 4 is bad And then to be able to pay three to make it until the end of a turn uh, a 4-1 Just seems really bad I mean at best you're looking to trade off with something and that just doesn't seem very good. So not a fan of that uh, Dawn's reflection enchant land for three and a green whenever the enchanted land is tapped for mana its controller adds two mana of any combination of colored mana to his or her mana pool excuse me uh, this is probably great in the sunburst deck uh, it's probably a card that you'd probably want on four something like that just so that you can really something like the skyreach manda you can actually pay and pick different color ma colored mana to actually produce uh, that sunburst effect i think that's pretty good but i would rather have the sunburst creatures first so that being said, I'd much rather have the Manta over this. Uh, our first uncommon is Skull Cage for 4 mana. It's an artifact at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. It steals 2 damage to that player unless he or she has exactly 3 or exactly 4 cards in hand. Uh, this is so conditional, I really don't like it. This is much more of a constructed card, uh, but other than that, I'm not a fan. This is sort of like the rack, but like way worse is what this amounts to. Uh, wow, okay, Eternal Witness. So one and two green for a two one. Uh, when, it in, when it comes into play, excuse me, you may return target uh, card from your graveyard to your hand. This card is a constructed bomb, uh, not bomb, but it's a very good constructed card for a lot of green decks. Uh, Birthing Pod really loved this back in the day, uh, and any recursion decks are gonna love it. I don't know how good it is in limited. I imagine it's quite good, honestly. Uh, and so I would kind of keep this up there above the Manta just because you can buy back literally anything uh, It's any card you want. So I really like this card. I think so far. That's definitely the pick uh, Circle of protection artifacts. This is an interesting card So one in a white for an enchantment and you can pay two and the next time an artifact of your choice would deal damage to you prevent that damage uh, This is actually more useful than it probably seems just because there are a ton of artifacts in this set as you've probably noticed at this point point. Uh, and so there probably are instances where you'd want something like this, but it is a bit conditional uh, And so for that reason I'd probably you can probably main board it in this set specifically, but in general I'd prefer to sideboard something like this just because it's really a protection against a specific thing And some decks are not necessarily gonna have that specific thing. So not a huge fan uh, and then our rare is Artificer's Intuition, one in a blue for an enchantment. You can pay a blue, discard an artifact card from your hand, search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or less, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This card is very, very bad, I think, especially in limited. Uh, and so for me, the pick is probably Eternal Witness, though uh, the Manta is actually pretty good as well, I think. Uh, by all means, tell me if I am wrong in the comment section below, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, and as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. With that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Back episode.